Hello, I'm Richard. I'm the clinical training manager here at Giraffe. Uh, so first of all, we are here to look at the, the stands, which is our um, abduction stander. Uh, first of all, we'll spend the first kind of 10 minutes just running through some of uh, some of the research around standing and abduction uh, and how we can relate that to uh, the stands. And then the, the really the star of the show is the stands itself. And my colleague Louise uh, is going to give you a full product demonstration around that. So like I say, ask as many questions as you like. Um, and also we can send you through the, the reference that references that we'll, uh, we'll look at today. So I will begin. So if we just take a look at what some of the research says, we're going to take a look at why, first of all, children with disabilities um, need to get up and standing, uh, why we might stand some of those children in abduction, what the research says, and if there's any benefits as well to um, older children and younger adults standing in abduction too. So first of all, um, in terms of the benefits of um, maintaining a, a standing programme, there's, there's a multitude of, of actual benefits. Uh, there's a lot of musculoskeletal benefits. So um, there's evidence to suggest that uh, being in an upright position helps with things like bone mineral density and reduction of spasticity. Um, it also helps our internal organs um, function better as well, being in, a, in an upright position and having a different postural change to our body is going to help with things like bowel movements. So the piece of evidence that we're going to focus on today is a, um, a systematic review um, done by Ginny Peleg, um, and she looked at 687 studies, of, thir uh, of which 30 met the inclusion criteria that she was looking at. Um, and really, she was looking into um, dosing for, for paediatric support in standing. So uh, that basically means how long does a child need to be standing for um, in order to gain a certain benefit? And within this systematic review, there are a number of um, studies of children standing in abductions that we'll, we'll also focus on. So just some of the, the general um, kind of findings from this systematic review. Um, Ginny found that a standing programme for uh, the length of five days uh, positively affected bone mineral density for up to 60 to 90 minutes per day. Um, and that can actually be in one block of time or um, structured throughout the day as well. There's evidence to support as well that hips um, stabilisation um, and also hip formation can improve uh, with standing in abduction of 30 to 60 degrees, so 30 to 60 degrees bilaterally. So that's 30, sorry, 15 to 30 degrees on each leg um, and up to 60 minutes per day. There was also an, a number of um, different benefits found in, in, in some of the studies around range of motion and also reduction of spasticity, which we'll also take a quick look at as well. So this is just a quote just to, to point out the, um, the, the need for a robust postural management plan, um, really. So it says that uh, children that ambulate less than two hours a day are more likely to develop secondary complications. And what that means is that if um, children do start to develop things like contractures um, or any skeletal deformities, it may limit their, their options in different positions uh, that, that can be achieved. So like we've mentioned, there's a lot of skeletal um, and muscular um, benefits from, from standing. The, the formation of, of the hip joints um, is, is obviously a really important one for our, for our younger children. And um, the studies that there's been around abduction, uh, standing in abduction show that it can in, improve the, the formation of the acetabulum on the head of femur. Also um, to reduce the, the likelihood of forming contractures um, and reduction of spasticity. So um, it might be a bit difficult to see um, this on your screen, but like I said, we can send these uh, studies through to you. So this is just a section of that um, of that systematic review that points out some of the studies that were done in abduction. So on the second one down there, that one was um, done in um, Barcelona, and it looked at children with a greater sorry, a gross motor function scale um, classification score of around, uh, sorry, of three. And what they actually did there was they put the children into um, plaster, plaster of Paris casts at between 30 to 60 degrees uh, of abduction. And what they found there was there, there was a reduction of spasticity, but also 
um, it was a really good way to passively stretch uh, the adductor muscles. So they found that the children that undertook this, the, uh, this intervention actually had much less of a scissoring um, gait pattern as well. Um, we don't have enough time really to go through through each one today, so um, I'll send you those through as a bit of a bedtime reading, really. Um, so another quote here just to point out the um, effectiveness of reducing spasticity. So they found that by standing uh, for 35 minutes, um, they, sorry, 30 minutes, the um, reduction of spasticity lasted for um, the uh, for 35 minutes afterwards. So like we mentioned, um, standing in abduction also has benefits around um, um, stretching out those adductor muscles that we can see there and re reduces that scissoring pattern, um, which obviously is really beneficial for children that are able to walk. Um, but also in terms of postural management for um, adopting a, a, a um, a productive seating position, having a bit of abduction is, is required for that. Also, um, uh, for, for lying and nighttime positioning, um, we also look to have a bit of abduction um, there as well. So we've already mentioned as, as well the positive benefits around the um, formation of a hip joint, so we won't go too much into that now. And again, this is just some notable research um, for your bedtime reading, which we'll send across to you. Um, just have different studies that looked into standing in abduction. Um, and just a recap of, of, of some of the some of the benefits that were found within that systematic review. Um, really good alternative uh, for passive stretching. It also helps to align the head of femur uh, and better locate that into the acetabulum. Reduction of spasticity and better um, uh, gait patterns with less scissoring. And obviously the all the evidence points to um, a better outcome for children if we, we start really early. So from the ages of, of 12 months, if a child's not standing, we can look into assisting them to do that. But also for children that are um, have, have developed their, their hip, hip joints um, and are a bit older, there's also a necessity to continue standing in abduction uh, because of some of those benefits that we've already spoke about, about um, uh, increasing the ductal length, uh, better gait pattern and achieving better positions in a 24 hour postural management plan as well. So without further ado, um, that's kind of the, the evidence side of things. I'll pass over now to my colleague, Louise, who's going to look at the um, stands itself. Um, hi everybody, um, welcome to Giraffe. Uh, as Richard said, my name is Louise and I'm just going to run through stands with you. So we have here on the plinth the stands by Jenks. What uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it sort of bottom up, build it up into a supine configuration and then show you how to switch it into prone because this is a sort of a three a three option standing frame. You can stand in upright, prone or supine in this frame here. And also um, you can stand in abduction. So we have four swivel casters on the base, each with a break. And then also on the base here, you can see, I hope you can see, there's a little black pedal. There's one on each side. They both do the same thing. If you push that down with your foot, the frame will angle there. So that's how you angle your frame. So you can get that into a nice horizontal position. So if you are putting a child in there in supine, you can lift or hoist onto that in a horizontal position and it's nice and safe and secure. Then we'll put your foot back on there and pull the frame back down. Once you've got it into the angle that you want it to be at, because you don't have to come completely upright, we can have it on a bit of an angle there. But there is a lock function on the back. You probably can't see, but there's a little black lever here. And if you push that down, that will lock that pedal off, which means that you can't then angle the frame by accident, which is super helpful if you've got siblings or nursery kids that like to climb on the equipment. There we go. So, 
Moving on to the actual standing frame for positioning. If you're familiar with Jenks standing frames, you might have seen the supine stander or the, the multi-stander. With those frames, the foot plate is sort of the, the fixed point and all the supports come up or down to the foot plate, depending on whether you want to make the frame bigger or smaller. With stands, it's the pelvic board that's the fixed position and everything else comes up to meet it. So if you're putting a small a small child in here, then um, you're going to be they're going to be standing quite a bit off the floor. Um, if you think about being at home, maybe in the kitchen, um, a breakfast bar height, this is a great height for doing baking or anything like that. It's also good for transfers. So if you're a parent and you are lifting in, which most parents are at this stage then um, it's not quite as low down. You've not got to get right down to the floor. If you do need a standing frame where you want to be sort of at peer level, then we do have the, the, the multi-stander and the supine stander. And you can get the multi-stander with abduction now as well. So it's just a case of choosing which, whichever suits your environment best for you. So you've got on each leg a foot plate. So with the, um, uh, with the fact that it abducts, the foot plates are obviously separate. But what that also means is that you can adjust them separately for height. So you can accommodate like length discrepancies really easy and also any angle adjustment that you need to make. Um, we can do that separately for each foot. Foot positioning wise, I've got the size one Jenks sandals on here. The, the sandals do come in four sizes, so there's lots of choice and there's lots of positioning and lots of adjustment in here. So you can really fine tune the foot positioning and then you just lock back down with the wing nut underneath. Moving on up to the knee supports. These are the stands standard knee supports, so they are obviously height adjustable. They've also got some adjustment for forwards and backwards travel, which can help accommodate for knee flexion. And then the side walls, which are these parts here, will adjust for width as well. On this one here, I've got the standard knee straps, which are just a fold over strap, just Velcro fold over like so. And on the other one over there, I've got the derotational strap. So if we have a quick look at that, so you can choose between these straps. Um, if you want the standard straps, you have to keep both the side walls on. If you want to go for the derotational strap though, you don't actually need both of these walls. So you could remove one if you wanted to, which sometimes I've done before with the real little kids because they can be a bit chunky and a bit bulky. So if you've got somebody that kind of pulls inwards, that ducks with their knees, you might want to keep that one on but remove the outer one and vice versa, or you can use them both. So let's take a quick look at the derotational strap. What this is basically is a cuff. So you want to get this wrapped around the knee nice and tight, obviously not too tight, but it does need to be relatively tight around the knee in order for the, the straps to work. And then you've got a black strap and a gray strap, and you're going to feed that through the, the side wall that you're using and then they stick on the outside like so. But what they also do is pull apart. Once you pull them apart, you can then pull gently on either the grey or the black and what that will do is it will rotate the strap one way or the other. So if you've got somebody in the standing frame whose position is looking lovely but it looks like they're perhaps internally rotating their knee a little bit, you could potentially correct that with the derotational strap. Um, I really like these, I use them a lot, so they're very easy to use once you know how to do it. Another knee option is we have the arched foam pads. So you can take the little yellow pad off the back there and swap it out for one of these. It's like memory foam, so it's a bit softer, but it also accommodates again for that little bit of a bend at the knee and that will slide in between these side walls here. Again, if you are familiar with the Jenks multi-stander, you will probably have seen these knee cups before. Um, these are the Jenks knee cups. 
If you would rather use something like this on stands, it is possible to attach these instead of the standard um, knee supports here. So lots of choice at the knee there. Just moving up to the pelvic board. So uh, yeah, like I said, this part is the fixed part. I've got the uh, lateral supports on here. You can also use a derotational strap instead. So it's up to you. If I just unclip this here, you've got some width adjustment. Excuse the Velcro. You've got some width adjustment in your, in your hip position in there. And then these are lovely straps. If you can get a real nice cross over there and then pull out from the sides to really tighten that, that pelvis back here to the, um, to the frame. And that's really nice, especially if you're going in in prone to get that bottom pushed right back in. Moving up to the chest support. This is the chest pad, or the back pad, and that is height adjustable there. So you've got some growth in that there. And then you've got basically the same, the same supports on the side here, exactly the same strap. And you've got some width adjustment and also height adjustment in the laterals as well. So if we were building this up into a supine configuration, we might want to pop a headrest on. A couple of different options for head support. This is the stands flat headrest, very simple, just, just a little head pad. We also offer the, the oval head pad, which again, you may have seen before. In fact, it's on that junior there um, in the corner. Or we offer the Jenks multi-grip head support, which is, um, will contour basically around, around the head. And it's, it's, very, it's quite bespoke, so you can use it wherever you would put your hands to hold that child's head. You can emulate that using the multi-grip head support. So I've got it sort of set up a bit of a curve in and out, but you can bend these right the way around, um, or you can have one side round and one side splayed out a little bit if you've got a child that maybe turns the head only one way. So there's lots you can do with this here. Um, this is the size two, so it's two links. Uh, you've also got a size one or a size three. So again, quite a bit of choice there for the for the different head support options. If you need some shoulder support, maybe, we also have the flat shoulder support there, which is very similar to the flat headrest. Or again, we've got the multi-grip shoulder support, which is basically the same as the multi-grip head support. You've got links inside here that you can contour and bend around, and that will sit on there instead of Set up the flat one. I'm just going to pop these ones on so that you can see what it would look like. So we've got everything on there that we need. I'll just quickly show you the tray. Tray brackets already on here. And then we're just going to slide the tray into those gaps there. Try and do that without sliding the whole standing frame back down the ramp at the back. To do that. There we are. And that's your tray on there. And you've got some adjustment in the, the depth of the tray. You've also got these tray wings here at the side. I don't know if you can see them coming in and out there. Um, so as, as the child gets a bit wider and you're bringing the lateral supports out to accommodate that, you can also bring the tray wings out to accommodate that as well. So that is your stands in a supine configuration. One of my favorite things about this standing frame is how easy it is to switch from, from supine to prone. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, and also how easy it is to switch from, from child to child. Um, I've got a couple of clients that have got one of these her two children because it's so simple to move around between kids. Basically because it's toll free and on the legs here, you won't be able to see them, but on the legs here, you've got uh, numbers. 
all the way down. So you can get your position in right for that child and then note that number down. You've also got numbers on the um, angle adjustment for the tilt and then numbers as well on the abduction, which I'll show you in a moment. So spinning around from supine into the prone position, all you're going to do, you're not going to do this with the child in there, obviously, but all you're going to do is spin around the sandals. Knees can stay the same. Hips, thoracic can stay the same. You're going to take off the shoulder and head supports. And then I just spin this around here. You don't have to do anything with the tray bracket. You're simply going to make those tray arms vertical instead of horizontal and then drop them into the top of the bracket like so and tighten them up. Excuse the squeaking. And then you've got the prone configuration. If I angle that forwards, you should be able to see the top there, push the wings in, and that she stands in prone. If you've got somebody standing in prone and you've tightened up your strap here, but they're still kind of sinking a little bit, you might need something a bit more robust at, at the back of their bottom there. We do offer a pelvic support pad. You can pop that in here like so, and then you can adjust the depth of it like that. So you can actually get a really nice sort of push in here. What this also enables us to do is build up on top of that. So if you've got somebody that can stand in prone um, and has got head control standing prone, but maybe they throw their head back um, every now and again and they could just do it with a bit of a prompt, we can add in a back support and then pop the head supports and shoulder support on top of there as well. And we can put any of the headrests on here. I mean, I think you're probably not going to be requiring a multi-grip or something like that if the child is able to stand in, in prone anyway. But it's nice to have something at the back of the head there, like I say, for those kids that maybe extend backwards or, or, or like to throw their heads back. So that is stands in prone with the full sort of pelvic back pad head support option on there. Just going to whip this stuff back off a second so it'll be easier for me to show you the abduction. So once you're standing nicely in the frame and you want to do that abduction there, you simply, there's two wing knobs at the back here, loosen those off and then you can pull the legs out like so. Now it is completely smooth, it's not incremental. So you can put it to any position that you like within the sort of naught to 30. But there is a gauge, again, I'll, I'll show you, but you won't be able to see on the video. There is a gauge on the back there and the gauge goes up in five degree increments. So you can see exactly where you are. So that's the maximum. Um, I have to say, I, I've never stood anybody like that. <laughs> Usually, gone for about 15 either side, so 30 overall. But we often start off at five and build up to that over time. There we go. So that is stands.